So you can thank the hurricane for not having to endure me ranting twice because I'm only doing one video. Episode seven got away from me because of the storm. I was so frustrated. I This show has lost the script. I don't even know what they're going for at this point. So special ops lioness, Taylor Sheridan. I've loved all of his stuff. I'm praising it. Even in stuff that's been weaker, it's still better than most things. I thought this show was going to be about lady special ops ladies. I'm like, okay, well, this is interesting. Let's see how he goes. We had a couple setups. It is a lot of girl boss stuff, but it was still going in a certain direction. And then we drove off the road. We have like a backstory of the main character. Zoe Saldana's Joe has to be about his the marriage life and the, the girl getting in a car accident and all of that nonsense. And then you have this special op. Like they were like commandeered to do a domestic um, issue on the border that turned into firing and killing. And that got messed. They had to account for that, which involved were it's just it's just every little subplot. The main line, we get back to the main line, get back to the main, main thing. And we turned into literally the scissoring heads. It's just the scissoring heads. I couldn't believe this become just a lesbian sequence, a fall in love, we're eating popcorn, having movie night. They're making out. There's comments about them making out. She's crying because they're making out. She can't kill anyone because they're making out. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh, my gosh. And then the politics of Washington. I thought, again, this is the Taylor Sheridan messaging. And this is for those of you at home who think how things actually work in America. Here's how the politics go, how, how the people on the ground work and whatever. At this point, it's such a minutia of what we care about. I would never recommend watching the show. This is the, why would we sit through eight episodes to watch? This could have been maybe an hour. I don't care about like three quarters of this show, like a whole bunch of it. And then what, what are they, what are you going for? So let's, let's get right to the episode. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll endure the recap together a little bit and that will help us kind of get through what is actually going on. Um, so, oh, the, oh, did we get past the credit? Oh, there's no real credits. That's right. There's no real credits on this one. Um, we just kind of jump right to uh, the nonsense. So, again, the biggest thing that happened was that Cruz, who is our lioness, is let me get centered because with the, with the mortar up i'm not actually centered now um so now she's fallen for this girl now the girl is her entry point to get close to this terrorist target who we've nicknamed the king of spades and, and joe <laughs> this is so crappy storytelling that i can't believe sheridan wrote this it's like, well, I know you're feeling soft. So here's what I'm going to do. We're going to on this long plane ride and you're going to watch videos of terrorist attacks that will make you hate this guy and want to kill him. And, and you won't care. I'm like, what? That is your, that is your story. That is your plot. Like that's, that's what's happening here. All right. So this is, you know, the skeezy on again, off again, liaison guy. I don't know why she doesn't have more, people on her team if we constantly have to involve this guy who's always more trouble than he's worth anyway they're putting her back in um in transit to get to where the girl is getting married the target is so and he's the only one that's going to be there to shadow her because they got to move the whole team to spain where this wedding's going to be so that's what all of this is minute after minute this is the airport walking talking we cut to washington we cut to washington and Sheridan is trying to give us a lecture or pull the curtain back, if you will, on the right hand and the left hand don't know what each you're doing. I don't know if they're trying to make an actual political statement or have an opinion about one administration or another, but it is just spineless political dribble of you have someone on a hit list you have operatives in the field to take care of that. 
Now they're going to take care of that. And you say, no, you don't want it done. And you not only don't want it done for PR reasons, because your president can't handle the PR and all the nightmare and all the questions or whatever, but also you don't have a strategy of who you want replacing him, leadership, control. Like this is, I mean, I get it. This is the last 25 years or so. Like this is like, you know, 20 years of since 9 11, 22 years. What, uh, fine, I get it. But is this entertaining to anyone? Is anyone like, oh, this is how it actually works? Is anyone like shocked? All this is is a room of people that you don't care about, you can't stand. You don't get a moral high ground from any of these characters. And out of the blue, this guy shows up. I don't, I don't, I don't Okay. He's got things to say. I care less about him. Like he's supposed to matter. And I didn't think we were supposed to like Michael Kelly's character. I thought we were supposed to cheer against him. He's one of the ones that actually is, is at least morally consistent. His performance is excellent. He's, he's spot on. And his character is at least like, look, this is the job you gave me. If you have a problem with it, F you, you should have taken him off the list. Me and my people are doing our job. And I'm like, hmm. At least his character is rooted in who he is. I mean, I like him, but at least that part is consistent. All this other nonsense and this girl boss, this is this new random girl boss. I could care less about her. She looks like she's had either um, too much plastic surgery or way too much makeup on. She doesn't look right either. And then we cut to the girl. Airport. This is the team getting on a boat on a boat with their long guns and their guitar cases full of equipment. Cause it's not going to be, it's not going to be suspicious with like six or seven Americans with all these stuff getting on this boat. And, uh, all right. And then and by the way, in case you forgot Nicole Kidman's part of the show, she doesn't really have many faces in this show. She's kind of got her one face. She kind of has this look like, Hmm. That's a pretty good cantaloupe, but I might not be ripe yet. It's like she has this like puckered lip. She does that face like it's like constantly. This is her face. She's giving you this glare of hatred because you gave her a fruit that's not ripe yet. Is how I feel like that's that's her face. Like, mm, I don't think that's right. And I don't think I think you knew that wasn't right. And you still gave it to me, you jerk. Like, that's the kind of face she makes. There's not much else going on. Uh, this is this is the the fortress where this guy is. We cut back to Washington and they're debating and debating and discussing while she's moving along. Now she gets pulled aside, and now we're interacting with this guy. Now we know of this guy, and we may have briefly have seen him. Who really cares? Because now you're supposed to take. Um, he's menacing, he's onto her, he doesn't trust her. And there's a line later on because of the he he's onto the fact that they have been a couple, they've been their thing. That's pretty much what the insinuation is. And I'm like, talk about like seventh inning stretch character development. Like you're gonna wait till now for us to be invested in this guy as being a threat to our operative and us caring about like like whatever. Okay, okay. And she's like, she she totally witches at him, by the way, which I'm not sure I understand. Oh, crap. I hit the wrong button. Um, why she would do that and risk the operation, because that's not how she should behave. Um, and then there's a lot of like uh, virtue signaling for the Muslim community about how the men stay with the men, the women stay to the women. They have their party. We have our party. We come together. We go back to our camps and it's all of that kind of stuff. And it's done in a way that is sort of like very softly condemning it. Right. And then you cut to Joe and reality. They're on the boat and she starts melting down because of the daughter. The daughter's having night terrors. And by the way, this is the husband. This is literally like the what pediatric cancer surgeon or whatever who looks like he sleeps in his car and talks about how sleepless his nights are. She because she's left him there, right? She's left him. This daughter is like, you know, dealing with like a paralysis issue and the trauma issue 
and all of that. And she's on the other side of the globe because of this mission. And even though she dabbles with conversations about I'm going to get out, you never get a sense that she's going to get out. You totally get a sense that she's going to become the next Nicole Kidman um, cantaloupe face. Like, cause ha- and her face is even worse because she's just got like nasty, mean, I'm grouchy or I'm emotional. There's nothing in between. And this boat, I don't understand why they would make a comment about someone would spot the boat when like, well, you wouldn't take, they, they would have a way of taking notes down on like the numbers on your boat, what boat it, they would know. Like, can we stop treating things as so dumb? It makes, I don't know, whatever. We're about halfway. Uh, then there's just a lot of talking about the mom. The dad's going to be there. The dad can get killed, blah, blah, blah. Cut to the boat, cut to Washington. And then it's all this back and forth. And that's what pretty much what is happening. The entire episode is all of this. And then the girl, she goes, this is where she goes again. So last episode we had a, like hardcore. I said, well, that's going to be in the past, right? It's going to be about Cruz moving past that. And what they do instead is they spin their wheels there. They go back to the scissoring hand because she can't let it go. She's got um, a flavor for Cruz. She's got Cruz on the brain. That's what she wants. She wants a little piece of Cruz. I want to feel loved again. I want to feel that she wants. It's all about her feelings. It's all about sex. It's all of that is what's happening. And then that creates the emotional turmoil for Cruz who can, who's barely holding it together. Right. That's what we get. Now, meanwhile, the guy we're supposed to now think of as a threat has figured out through facial recognition because our, our government never thought about doing this. Evidently, they have not scoured the Internet well enough to know there could be pictures of Cruz. He's pieced together her going into military. She's something else. She's in the Marines. That's what he knows. And while that's happening, Cruz goes into the kitchen. She's talking to herself about, quote, the mission, which she should not be saying out loud. And she runs into the king of spades and they basically talk about gelato. And great gelato. And now we have gelato. We joke about comic books and how they talk about food and they talk and talk and talk. It literally doesn't feel like Taylor Sheridan wrote this. I feel like Taylor Sheridan had some ladies write this and he put his name on it. That's how I feel. Now, I'm, I'm wrong. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm just assuming that I'm wrong. What do you think of that? Um, because, um, I'm just having a hard time believing he wrote such generic tripe that none of us would care about for the show. Like it, 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 it's just impossible to, to believe someone that who wrote such dynamic elements in so many other shows and they've, they've, they've all just turned out to just be so good. And in this one, it's just so generic it's all the checkboxing. It's all these silly little stereotypes. So 43 minutes in this episode. So we had all last episode. And then 40 something minutes. And we only have, only have 13 minutes left. That's with credits. Now we actually have the threat. So the guy we're scared of walks in, says Marine. She turns around. Then she just starts basically killing everybody. Just stab, 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 stab. That's what she's doing. That's it. She ends up taking care of both. She has a, like a, an alert system that she has on a bracelet. So she hits this little bracelet and now here comes the team. They're all sealed up together and you have a shootout as she's running and somehow miss uh, dodging every single bullet. I, <laughs> they make stormtroopers and uh, biker scouts um, look good. because They don't hit her. I actually thought she got hit twice and then at the end they were like she's that's not she's not hurt at all like I, I thought she got hit twice like they were trying to um she wouldn't be able to dodge everything she might end up being in harm's way that would make joe even more emotional about doing all of this because she almost lost another lioness or something no 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 she just you know serpentine serpentine dodge some bullets hide behind a little statue keep going yeah she hides behind this she hides behind the turtle rock. I kid you not. It's that dumb. So they rescue her. Actually, it's it's actually really kind of sad on how bad the rescue is because basically they're they're giving her cover fire and they just tell her swim to the boat. 
I don't know that there's a moment to assess that she's been hit or not, which we I, I thought she had been. And then she starts swimming. So I thought, oh crap, she's gonna drown or she's gonna have stroke. No, no, there's no she just starts swimming. She's fine. And then you have girl boss. Because you literally have her screaming. Did you get him? Did you get him? Did you get him? I don't care if you got shot. I don't care if you're who's that? It's like, what on earth? And they tell Washington and Washington is like at odds with one another. And then we end up with like this. It's just everyone starts fighting with everyone. Everyone hates everyone type sequence is how the show ends. Cruz wants to punch Joe in the face. She's mad. Joe's sad because she's not at home with her girls. She's sad. Here's uh, the target girl. She's sad because her daddy and her uh, potential husband, they got killed and she was betrayed by the girl that she was scissoring for. Okay. Cut to the house where Nicole Kidman comes in and this horrible conversation with this guy we're supposed to believe is her husband. And if this guy, Oh, come on. How come it won't give me the right shot? Ah, hate it when it does that. It's off by a frame or something. Come on, dude, show me. Cause he does not look like he could land. Um, he could land Nicole Kidman. Like what? Like, no, No, not going to believe it. Joe goes home and she just cries. She just cries. And that's how the show ends. Now, the other part that happens in and around that is this conversation both by Cruz and in Washington about oil prices. Like none of this matters. You cut the head off a of Hydra. You just made more terrorists. It's about oil prices. It's about like, I'm like, okay. So we went through a show in 2023 about a lioness program where we can have women who can get in closer to terrorists that we can't get to. And it's going to showcase, I think, I thought, uh, strong women who can do this and hold their own in a different way. Like they're vulnerable because they could be outsized or whatever, but they're so determined. They're, you know, Cruz is this perfect candidate, whatever. And in fact, what we did was we showcased um, women are terrible at this. They're emotional. All they do is scream and curse at one another and everyone else in the room thinking everyone needs to just cowtail to them, no matter how stupid or illogical their points are. Um, if they fall in love with some person that they barely know who is the daughter of a terrorist, then they don't want to do their job. They don't want to do this. They, they would just become compromised. So they can't be like a James Bond type. If you have too much of a family life, by the way, Joe and, Joe and her husband are horrible parents because not only do they have the one that they were neglecting who got in the car accident in the hospital sequence, whatever episode that was, there was a younger daughter and another daughter. So they are horrible parents. Nicole Kidman and this, I guess this husband, they're, they're talking about money and who pulls the lever. Just just off all these White House people. Everyone's awful. Everything's awful. There's no moral. There's no. There's nothing redeeming or interesting. I feel like I've, I've been I've been um, I've pulled back the curtains on a program that is weak at best and lucky sometimes and outdated is how I feel. Okay, that's how I feel. It's just that. That's what Taylor Sheridan's show did for me, was show me that. Um, kind of a waste of my time. Really couldn't believe how bad it is. I was, I'm was i so incredibly disappointed. I cannot believe we spent so much screen time with the scissoring hens. I can't believe they think that this is, that they're so dumb. They think this could be empowering. You guys are not empowering people at all. You are showcasing weakness, a vulnerability. And they shouldn't be in those jobs. That's what you're showcasing. You're not showcasing they're in those jobs. This is what it like. They're good at them. You're showcasing they suck at all of it because all of these women are in charge. And then the men that are in charge, they don't know what they're doing. You got the, you, Michael Kelly's character is the only one that's like morally focused like a laser. Morgan Freeman's character, who didn't even exist for five or six episodes, he comes at the last minute and he's just a complete jack wagon. And I don't even know about I don't even know what what the character's name is for the other guy. It, it just all it, it's all just the only people. Hang on, let me back up because that's not true. Michael Kelly's not the only one. The only characters that are great 
that I would love to see more of that I was rooting for are actually the special ops members of her team, Joe's team. Um, we don't get enough of them. They come on the scene early on and we love them like two cups and Tucker, which is LaMonica Garrett, who is um, great in um, 1883. Um, those characters that are on that team, that core team, Tex and Randy or whatever, all of them, they're who I want more of. I want more special ops, the team, doing stuff without Joe and all of this emotional drama baggage of crap in this show. So the hens won out. The scissoring hens won the day and ruined my show. And it is in a competition. I'm trying to determine if this is more of a letdown and disappointment than justified. Because that's where we're at. That's how bad this is. I'm like, I'm in this, and this is this bad scale of, I'm not saying it's the worst show of the year. It is among the most disappointing show of the year for me. So did you watch it? I watched it so you didn't have to. Is that your take? You guys let me know. Take care, everybody. Talk to you soon. I am Pops.